Hello everyone, I am Grandmaster Erwin Lamy and in this video I would like to uh, present to you the game between uh, Vishya Anand and Levon Aronian, played recently in the Candidates Tournament. Um, for Vishy, who won the tournament, as we probably all know, uh, this was a uh, fantastic start. He beat Aronian in, in the first round and in a way I think it decided the fate of, uh, of both players. Um, after e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, a6, bishop a4, a Spanish game, knight f6, castle, no surprises there, bishop e7, rook e1, b5, bishop b3, castle. Uh, we reached uh, one of the main tabias of today's uh, modern chess, and uh, instead of going for the uh, martial variation, which is Aronian's main line, he takes d5, knight takes d5, this pawn sacrifice which has had many white players um, had sleepless nights over. Um, Black has sacrificed the pawn, but in return he gets this tremendous compensation. Um, the bishop is coming to d6, usually the bishop is coming to f5, very easy development. The king is, is pretty weak usually, and uh, Black has fantastic composition in the in the marshal so players uh, from the white side have been trying uh, to look for alternative methods to to play against this system and h3 uh, is is one of them after bishop b7 d3 d5 and uh, aronian uh, makes it a, a martial gambit anyway even in this uh, way because after e takes d5 knight takes d5 white has the option of taking on on e5. He doesn't do that immediately though, he plays first knight bd2, queen d7, knight takes e5, knight takes e5, and rook takes e5. And this position uh, I think was, uh, uh, it is actually the reason why I'm, I'm showing this example, um, to show you the um, the meaning of, of luck in an, in an event of this kind. Of course these players, they are extremely skilled, they are extremely strong, these are the, the best players uh, in the world we are, we, are, we are seeing here, but also at this level there's an element of luck, and with luck I mean that normally speaking uh, Aronian is one of the best prepared players in the world, and um, had he been thoroughly prepared in this particular position, then uh, the first round may have ended completely differently for, uh, for Anand uh, as we will see in the game. In the game, Aronian played knight f6, and a much stronger move would have been knight f4, which looks very natural indeed, and he, I'm sure he also considered this move, but after knight f3, he may not have immediately uh, uh, see a clear uh, follow-up. And of course, if you haven't prepared this line at home, it is also not so easy to see the follow-up, but the follow-up is beautiful and uh, seems to uh, refute uh, white's setup immediately. Black has the amazing move, knight takes g2 here, king takes g2, and well, uh, what is the what is the, the deal here, you, you might ask? Well, there's an amazing follow-up, a6, a5, a6, a5. Well, obviously, in the immediate threat is to play a4 and, and trap that uh, that bishop on, on b3, but there's another d point. The rook from a8 is about to enter on a6 and go over to the to the king side where he was going to attack the, the enemy king. And it seems that after, for instance, a4, we have to try to save the bishop somehow, rook a6, um, I, I tried d4, rook g6, check. Uh, king h2, because of course if we will go to f1, then it looks like queen takes h3 simply, and well, the knight on on f3 will, will fall because it's attacked two times. Hor horrible. So king h2 only move, but now after bishop d6, well, black is just, it seems completely winning. Uh, there is a pin on, on the rook, since the, the king here is very badly placed, and simply black has crushing threats. And uh, it's really quite amazing that uh, um, somebody, as I said, as well prepared as Aronian, um, yeah, didn't go for this. And you also have to imagine that um, 
the, the, the psychological blow it must have given Aronian that upon arriving in his hotel room, his seconds probably told him that, well, you know, you had this fantastic chance to immediately strike in the first round. And uh, I'm pretty sure that if Knight of Four, Knight XG2 had, had been played, then we would have seen a completely different tournament. So this first round game between these two, uh, the fate was decided here. After Knight of Six played in the in the game, uh, Rond played Rook E1, modestly back, Rook E8, Knight F3, Bishop D6, Bishop E3, Rook E7, and I'm going now towards the second critical moment, I think, H, H6. So, um, white is a pawn up here. I mean, clear, clear pawn up. On the other hand, black is very actively placed. All his pieces occupy good, good squares. So it's not so easy to, to make uh, progress here. Um, the knight is about to head to d5, I think. Um, sorry. The um, knight is about to head to d5, uh, applying some pressure on the, on the bishop on e3. The rooks are well placed on the e-file, of course, applying some bishop pressure. Also, the bishops are aiming at the king. So it's not so easy to, to make progress here. And the, the move that um, Anand chooses on here is, is really, really interesting. He played the move knight e5. Which means he's not at all going to sit on his pawn. He's simply immediately giving it back. Bishop takes e5, d takes e5, rook takes e5. He's exchanging the queens, plays rook e d1, and simply saying, well, you know, you have your pawn back, but I have two fantastic bishops, and if you will try to get one of my bishops with, with knight c5, I'm simply taking rook d7, and obviously. Uh, with all these weaknesses, f7, c7, the very strong bishop on b3, bishop, all both hitting on, on f7, white has a clear advantage. So Aronian didn't go for this, he played knight f6. And now things wouldn't be that bad for, for black if, let's say, he would get the chance to play knight d5 next, maybe even exchange it for the for the bishop here, things would be perfect. But also Aronian's next move is very precise, really spot on. He played c4. Stopping knight d5, although you can you can play knight d5 by exchanging first and play knight d5, but then of course it's obvious that uh, that is a serious concession. And after, for example, bishop d2, followed by moves like well rook c1, uh, applying pressure on on these these pawns here, uh, white's advantage would be very serious. The bishop uh, pair is of course a, a mighty weapon, uh, especially in in. Uh, when it's in the hands of someone like uh, like Anand. Um, Aronian didn't go for this, he played c6. Anand simply uh, improved his position, rook c1, rook e7, a4. Again, highlighting that it's going to happen here. And uh, since, for example, after a random move like king a, uh, I'm sorry, a random move like king h8, probably there will be some exchanges. And a move like, say, rook c5. And it's clear that here the, the people will become weak. I think that Aronian feared this. And that's the reason that in this position he did decide to take on c4. Bishop takes c4 and knight d5. And now after bishop c5, rook e4, f3. You see it's small moves that make the difference here. Rook e5. He simply proves his position king f2. And slowly but surely he uh, turned this big advantage into a win. I would surely recommend that you play through this entire game uh, on our website, chesscity.com. Uh, I'm going to end the video here because I think I made my point. Aronian missed a big chance in the opening. Aronian then superbly uh, uh, um, uh, transformed his, his uh, advantage of a pawn into a uh, technical endgame where his bishop pair proved uh, to be very strong. He, he very skillfully uh, um, improved his position slowly but surely and won the game. A very good start for Vichy, uh, winning first game against an opponent which he has never beaten with White before. And for Aronian, as I said, it was uh, the beginning uh, of the end. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, keep watching chesscity.com. Thanks.